Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to this episode of Sunday Messages. Today is the 64th episode of PTA, what was formerly Prayer and Tarot, but we expanded this into an advice column as well for those of you who are catching up or first-time listeners. So let me just briefly explain the prayer format for you, for those of you who are new. I say prayers in I'm in agreement for format. So being in energetic agreement is like an energetic yes. So holding the vision, holding the agreement for that person to step into, feel into, and to have that unfold in real time. So... My invitation for you, the listener, is to also be in agreement. And that is pretty much it. And then we'll go into the advice column, then I'll pull some tarot cards for this week, see what's coming up, and we will wrap this episode up. Before we dive in, I want to remind you that Clown, my next live class, is going to be taking place on the 28th of October. So that will be next Thursday, not this Thursday, but the following Thursday, if you're listening to this on the date that it's published, which is going to be the 20th. And I really designed this for those who would like to experience free flowing creative expression, uninhibited creative expression, feeling fearless and courageous and aligned in your creative expression, whatever that might be. So If you're a business owner, this would apply to the creative projects that you have in terms of business. If you're an artist, a musician, if you have something that you want to bring into the world, but there might be a lot of fear, contraction, fear of persecution, judgment, and some, let's say, programs or pictures that are really steering you away from your expression and are just putting you in a box. And that can be really, really painful for creatives. So if you're experiencing frustration, fear, or mm, any stickiness around your creative flow, this is the medicine for you. And I'm just really excited. This is something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. And we're going to have a lot of fun. It is going to completely relieve any fear, doubt, anxiety, Um, that you might have around the creative process and tapping into that creative flow. So we're going to work out all of those bugs. And as always, the link will be in the description box or it's onyxhealing.com slash clown. If you want to go directly there, check it out, feel it out, see if this is something that's really resonating with you and would be supportive for you at this point in your experience. Okay, let's dive into... The prayer requests, first thing, I just have one prayer today. This is for Maria, and it looks like your daughter is having anxiety issues at school, and you're experiencing a lot of stress in that, whatever that might be, holding space for her, helping her navigate that experience as well. So I'm in full agreement for you to access your own personal flow, your own stability, your own sense of being grounded. And from that space, it just creating a lot of safety in your energetic state. And then from that space, I'm in full agreement for your daughter to navigate this with ease, for it to be a clarifying experience, and it to be the type of growth period where she's developing a lot of tools, a lot of skills, and navigating this growth period in a way that is going to serve her long term. I'm in full agreement for the best possible outcomes all around and for this to feel expansive and enhancing rather than inhibiting. Full agreement. Okay, let's move on to the advice column. So this one is for Maria as well. And here's the segment, and then I will give you my answer. I'm wanting a job where I can work from home or that's super flexible so I can be present for my elementary school-age daughter. The job that I have now is your typical 9 to 5, decent pay, benefits, etc. I want to make more money and be at home. I've begun the job search, but wondering, do I just take the leap of quitting and letting the new job come forth? I have very little energy to focus on this as I'm still working full-time at a job I loathe. 
Okay, so there's a couple different pieces of this. Anytime there is contemplation of do I or don't I do something, personally, I don't feel it has as much to do with the decision itself, whether that be wait or do something now, take action now. It has to do with how easily can I hold this in my body How much can I trust to this in my body? If it's something that is going to send me into, let's just loosely call it a trauma response. If it's going to send you into fight or flight, don't do it. Don't do it. It's too stressful. You're not ready. You need to hold off. I understand a lot of people get confused at this point because they're getting told a lot of conflicting things like leap before you're ready, jump and the net will appear. Well, you should have another job lined up before you actually do something. That's the responsible thing to do. And there's all different pieces of, I guess we could call it um, fortune cookie wisdom that comes from all of these different sources. What I'm saying is it, it doesn't actually matter as much as the trust and confidence that you have in yourself and what you feel like is energetically correct for you. If you told me, Sydney, if I quit this job and I have a child that I need to take care of and it is going to make me sick and anxious and I'm going to be a total wreck if I don't have a consistent paycheck coming in, then hold off and just stabilize yourself and your work would be in one ditching the story of I loathe my job I loathe my job I loathe my job that would be the first thing that I would clean up and then the second thing is just stabilizing yourself so that that can bleed over into the next opportunity because right now if you're in I hate where I'm at I hate where I'm at I hate where I'm at you could do a geographical change And then bring all of that baggage with you. So it's really important that you don't overemphasize that in order to justify making a move. You want to make a move out of alignment, not out of frustration and hatred for the present moment. That's not going to provide sustainable relief that's long-term and consistent. It might bring a breath of fresh air for a brief moment, but you will quickly realize that you just brought all of the same problems with you. So it's really important, I would say more than anything else about any decision that you make, is it energetically correct? As in, is it the highest possible energetic footprint that you can make into this move? Because if the answer is, no, I'm sloppy, I'm half-assing it, I'm frustrated and angry and resentful, then you're not baking the best possible energy into the action piece. And that's more of what matters here. If you have a bunch of negative emotion that's getting tangled up in the decision, then the the decision itself is actually less important than the energy. Now, if you are holding the energy of, this job has served me really well, it's paid me well, I have great benefits, it's been a perfect lily pad for where I've been at this stage in my life, and I'm also ready for being able to work from home, I'm ready for all of this, and the best move, the most aligned move that I can make is jumping first, is quitting first, and I know for a fact without a shadow of a doubt, jobs are easy to come by, and I'm absolutely going to get this job. If that's your energy behind it, then there's relatively no risk in taking the jump. So that's what this ultimately comes down to, is the state that you're in, in what feels most aligned, in what feels best. If quitting the job feels best and you trust yourself, do that. If quitting the job right now feels terrifying and it's going to send you into shock or paralysis or it's, it's going to feel really, really unstable, wait. Whether you stay or quit is the least of your concerns in this moment. The first thing that you want to address and get clear on is where is your energy 
What are you thinking? What are the stories that you're telling yourself? What's the energy that you're holding in your body? How much confidence do you have? How much conviction do you have? What feels like the most organic next stage of this process? And then from there, everything else is going to get way easier. So that's the best piece of wisdom that I can give you for this. Energy first, decision second. Okay, this next advice column is for Lara. Well, I, I it could be it could be Lara, but I'm a Californian, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say her name is Lara. And I'm I'm sorry if I'm getting it wrong, but I'm just letting you know that's what my accent demands of me. Okay, anyway, let's move on to your question. For a while now, my guidance has been bringing holistic rest to my attention as something I need to master before I can continue on and receive the gigantic things that I am manifesting. At first, this seemed so simple, just chill out for a bit. Sure. But now I understand that this is a deep, multifaceted process that encompasses truly showing up for myself, mind, body, and soul in a way I never have before. And in all honesty... It's something I'm struggling to fully grasp. What advice do you have for achieving true holistic rest? The thing is, as you mentioned before, this isn't a one-dimensional experience. My dear, dear, dear friend Jeremiah mentioned something to me one day when we were talking about rest. And he said, you know, rest is not... Oh, rest. I'm going to lay around and eat loaves of bread. And I think that genuinely is what a lot of people think rest is. Or uh, this idea that rest has something to do with laying around and consuming or laying around and indulging. And quite honestly, that could not be further from the truth. And the, the best way I can put it, When you're thinking about holistic rest, the way you're phrasing it, I would switch that into what type of rest is best suited for this point in time and this season of my life? What type of rest is the moment actually calling for? Because it's going to look different. And the more you allow it to shapeshift, over time, the easier it's going to be to sustain. If you get too locked up in, well, this was rejuvenating before and this made me feel well rested before, but now that's petering out. And now it's not working anymore. And I've like extracted all of the juice that I can from that experience. You're going to get really tangled up and frustrated because the moment is calling for something different or the period of life that you're in is asking for different tools, and it's important for you to have the self-awareness and foresight to be able to understand what you truly need. So the thing that it seems as though you're kind of getting confused by is the fact that it's an ever-moving target. When it comes to rest, it's not something that's like, take a bath, read a book, do this, listen to soothing music. That's if we just had a singular tool or to-do list that worked, that wouldn't truly be resonant with what your body is asking for moment by moment, right? So you want to get out of this idea that rest is a, a stationary activity that is always going to look and feel the same. Because there are going to be different times and different places and different um, literal seasons in terms of the, the atmosphere around you that are going to call forth different activities. So for example, in the summertime, it's warm, it's sunny outside. Being out in nature is something that could be extremely rejuvenating. In the dead of winter, if you live in a bitter cold area, going outside might be very energetically demanding and be very taxing on the body. And it's it, there's, there's a potential that it doesn't feel exactly the same way it would in the summertime or in late spring. The same way in the wintertime, if you're in bitter cold, building a fire, 
just being by the fire, watching the clouds outside, watching the snowfall, drinking a warm beverage, layering up your clothes, incorporating more heat into your system is actually going to be more nourishing and more rejuvenating. Whereas if you did that in the summertime, you'd be like, what are you trying to do? Give me heat stroke? Get out of here with that. I don't want anything to do with this fire or get the sweater off of me. So you have to trust your body more than you trust your mind to mentally understand what the body is trying to communicate. In my experience, I consider my intuition to be a far better interpreter for my body's signals than my mind. My mind... It misses a lot of stuff. It has a lot of blind spots. It wants everything to make sense and be linear. And when it comes to what my body needs, a lot of the time it's nonsensical and it is nonlinear and it doesn't look the same and it can't be met with a simple checklist with specific activities. That's just not the way rest works. So if you want to come from a holistic perspective when it comes to rest, you want to treat it as ever-evolving, ever-moving, ever-changing, and different times, places, seasons, so on and so forth, as calling for different things from you. And that is how you will make the most of rest. The second thing that I want to mention here, when it comes to, I have to bring in holistic rest before I can continue and receive the gigantic things that I am manifesting. Let me make a correction here because you don't want to make rest the barrier in between you receiving. I would say rest is an avenue to actually be receptive to the things that you desire and the manifestations. That is a better way to phrase it because if you say, I have to totally master rest in this whole rest thing and this relaxing and chilling out thing before I can get any big stuff, I do do not agree with that at all. I disagree, disagree, disagree. Because what that's going to do is your mind is going to tell you you're not doing it right. You're not resting enough. You didn't get rejuvenated the way you thought you would from that thing that you're doing that's so-called rest. Your mind is going to start to fuck with you and bully you if you make rest a barrier. So don't make it a barrier. Make it a part of the process. And I will absolutely be the first person to say that rest is important. It does matter. It is an important skill. You're correct that you will start shutting things out if you can't take a period where you're receiving and you're receptive and you're softening and allowing things in because just constant output is not something that it is going to keep you in a receiving state or a receptive state. So rest is a part of the receiving frequency. It's not the whole thing. It's more nuanced than that. Receiving, I'm going to do a whole separate podcast on, don't worry. But rest is a part of it, learning how to do that and listen to the divine intelligence of your body is a part of that. So yes, you will get better and better at this thing, but there is not a finish line of now you have learned how to rest enough to where you get big things. That's not it. Put that out of your mind. That is the the faulty premise here. When it comes to receiving bigger things, the important thing to keep in mind is you have to actually be able to open enough and allow enough and soften enough to where you can hold big things. That's really the key thing here. And that, mm, I would kind of categorize that separately from rest. But if you're struggling with rest for now, That's a great place to start is, okay, rest, soften, allow, breathe, relax, learn how to do those things because that's an important building block for higher states of receptivity. Because I also think of receptivity as being tiered and there's different frequencies within that in and of itself. 
And rest is just one, it's just one piece under the umbrella of receiving. That's the best way I can describe it. So yes, you're starting in the right right spot. You're doing things well, keep going, keep moving towards it, but really listen to your intuition about what would be most rejuvenating or most restful for you rather than your mental body. Your mental body is going to give you a bunch of shoulds. Your intuition is going to reveal to you what is true and correct for your body in the present moment. So that's my biggest piece of advice. Listen to your intuition even if it doesn't make sense because that will get you there faster than what you think you should do. Okay, so the one more thing that I want to mention, I know that that question kind of cracked open a can of worms. I have, you should see the notes section of my phone, it has so many podcasts that I need to record. But keep in mind, I will be doing a receiving episode, I will be doing an episode on being or doing nothing. Um, I, I have podcasts that are in the works, so there will be more to come when it comes to that particular topic. Don't worry. And now let's pull some cards for the week. Let's see what's going on, what you need to know. Eight of coins. We have judgment. I'm really getting this energy of wanting to see things through. So if you're starting something, see it through. Like if you're waffling, don't initiate then. That's the one thing that I would be really, really clear on. Before you start giving your energy to something, decide if you are committed and devoted to it first. Make the choice first. And then after that, get your energy behind it. Once you're committed, though, even if you waffle, the thing that you want to do is bolster your energy behind the devotion. Remember, no one is forcing you to do anything here. This is a matter of back your energy behind your choices, and then that will bring the greatest possible results. And then let's pull one more. Ace of Rods. See, okay, this is one of the things that I see a lot of people do is they're like, oh, I want this thing. And then they start it and then they get really, really shaky in it. They have a hard time sustaining it. And then they get full of self-doubt, questioning themselves, so on and so forth. And if they don't see immediate results, they start dropping things like, never mind, I made the wrong choice. They start backing out and getting cold feet. The practice here is going to be sustain your freaking energy. Keep your eye on the prize. Don't stop. Don't drop the ball. So it's like you're capable of more than you realize, but you can't go into things with, I mean, you can expect immediate results, but not if the cost of that is a a deep sensation of disappointment. If you're going to back out at the first little fragment of disappointment that comes up, then don't expect immediate results. Expect your energy to be consistent in whatever you're doing, and then you will get results. Even if you have a bad day, lay off the important topics and come to it later. So just keep in mind that's what this week is about. Figuring out what are you devoted to and once you decide to devote to something, give it your all. Really give it your all. It's interesting. This is also one of the big themes of clown as well, just in terms of like not not fearing the process, not fearing getting your energy behind something and everything that that entails or continuing to see something through. But that's the main message here is commit, decide, back it with your energy, see it through, see it all the way through. Do not quit prematurely because you need to collect the data. Only after you go through something in its entirety can you reflect on it clearly. If you bail too early then it's not something that you're going to be able to actually evaluate because the answer is going to come up again and again. Well, you should have stayed the course. You should have continued 
making the attempts. You should have backed your energy behind it. You should have kept going in order to see what the truth was, the truth of the outcome. And that would give you far better data than just, well, you didn't sustain it. So the moral of the story, see see things through, give it your all, see what happens, and then evaluate after. Not in the middle of the process. Keep your nose out of that business when you're in the middle of the process, okay? All right, now I have some Sovereign Oracle cards that I'm going to pull for you as well. Let's see what comes up. Ground, take a breath, find your center, act from your inner knowing, accept Gaia's loving embrace. And then incorporate, weave in an unusual element to bring all of your gifts together under one umbrella, legitimize the endeavor. Yes, okay, so this is the other thing. Don't go into something already expecting failure or expecting something to not work so that you can cop out. That's ridiculous. If you don't get your energy behind it, it's not a legitimate try. You really, really, really want to focus your energy intently this week. Okay, one more. I'll pull one more for you. Astral vision, use your higher sight. Map out what's destined to be. Breathe in, breathe and take small steps. 3D takes time to manifest. Okay, so this is also all in a consistent theme with everything. Ground yourself, breathe, everything's going to be okay. Make sure that you're backing your energy behind everything. And don't call things prematurely. Don't jump to conclusions prematurely. That is the worst thing that you can do. Do not assume failure when you're 10% into the process. You got to get out of that habit. And then things will get better from there. All right, my friends. One more thing that I want to remind you of is I will be opening up the wait list for Eden if you want to get your application in early to get the best chances of getting a seat since there are limited spots available. And that is going to be starting in January of 2022. It's been given a massive upgrade as well. I will be sharing more on that soon. And I just wanted to invite you, if you feel like you want to work with me in a more intimate capacity in terms of having access to me five days a week, so on and so forth, then I would suggest you get on that wait list and then I will open the doors and then everyone is invited to apply in mid-November. I think I'm going to open things up officially. So... If you would like that, you are more than welcome to go get on the wait list. The link will be in the description box or the show notes, depending on where you're listening to this. And that's it. So have a beautiful week and I will talk to you beautiful people later. Have a good one. Thank you for subscribing, sharing, sending to your friends. I always appreciate it. Thank you for leaving wonderful reviews and I will talk to you next time. Have a good one, everybody. Bye-bye. Everybody, bye-bye. Everybody.